thought there would be more people. <laughs> okay. Um, so welcome to Selected Literature Works. Um, this is kind of a vague course name, right? Selected Literature Works. There's so much literature that we could read. Um, so I decided to choose some works of literature that perhaps you may not have the chance to read in other classes. Maybe it's a kind of literature that's not often assigned in a college classroom. Or maybe it's because uh, the original language isn't in English and we're reading a translation. Uh, so the first part of the course, uh, weeks two to four, we will be reading essays. Uh, now, are essays literature? Do you think? It kind of depends on what kind of essay, right? Mm -hmm. If it's an essay written for the newspaper, maybe yes, maybe no. If it's an essay written for like a science textbook, then you'll probably think it's not literature. Uh, but then there are things like personal essays, memoirs. Uh, and we're going to be reading uh, three of those. Uh, next week, we're going to be reading an essay called uh, Telluride 19, an introduction. I'll talk a bit more about that later today to prepare you. Uh, the following week, we'll be reading an essay from 1953 called Human Relationships. Is that right? No. Uh, week three, we're going to be reading an essay called, this is a very fun title, I'm Broke and Mostly Friendless and I've Wasted My Whole Life. Uh, so we get to see uh, what's happening there. Uh, it's, it's actually a two-part essay. It's, it's an agony and column. In Chinese, we call this yinan uh, zazen Someone wrote in to ask the columnist, uh, what do I do with my life? It's a failure. And the columnist found a way to respond to them. Uh, I've taught this essay before in another school, and one student later wrote me and saying uh, it saved her life or something. So I think it's probably worth reading. Uh, and then the week after that, we're going to read Human Relationships, which was originally written in Italian, uh, but the translation is also quite beautiful. Uh, the book that it's taken from is a collection of essays called The Little Virtues. Uh, the entire book is, is amazing. If you can track it down, it's full of great essays. Each essay is uh, not too long. I guess the longest is probably, I don't know, 20, 22, 23 pages. Uh, so it's not too hard to read. After that, the next unit will be reading a play. The play is called art, including the quotation marks. Uh, it was originally written in French by playwright Yasmina Reza, and it's, it's her most famous and influential play. Uh, and it's, it's quite worth reading, I think. Um, but of course, a play is not just meant to be read, it's also meant to be performed. So after spending two weeks on this play, and it's a, totally, a total of about 60 pages, so 30 pages per week. Uh, plays move fast. It's just uh, people talking, so it moves very fast. Um, the third week of this unit, which is week eight, uh, I will ask each group, I'll divide you into groups, and I'll ask each group to put on a short performance of part of the play. Uh, you don't have to memorize the play. You can hold it up and read it as you perform. Uh, but I hope that this exercise will get you to think about the different ways to express emotion and ideas, even though the words are the same. So uh, I will get into more detail about that as the time approaches. Week 9 is the midterm exam. Uh, now, the midterm exam will be done online. Uh, it will be open book, open dictionary, open internet. You can use any resources that you want, except you may not talk to other people about the exam. You can talk to me. You can always write me an email, ask me questions, uh, but talk to nobody else. Um, and the exam will cover 
uh, everything that we have read in the first half of the semester. I'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, the second half of the semester, we will be reading a novel from 1965, an American novel called Stoner by John Williams. Uh, our library has a copy, but it's currently been lent out to Professor Tsai Ren Jie because I recommended it to him. Sorry. Uh, after next week, when we're more sure about how many students we have, I will ask you whether you want to buy the book through the department. Uh, the publisher says each copy is about 500 NT. It's actually not too short or too long. It's 278 pages uh, and in, divided into 17 chapters. So week 10, we're going to be reading the first two chapters, mainly because chapter two is very long. And then after that, it's three chapters per week. Uh, now, because our library does have a copy and uh, it's also available elsewhere, you are free to decide that you don't want to buy a copy with uh, the department and you want to acquire the text on your own. But if you do choose to find another copy or version of the novel, it is your responsibility to make sure that you know where we are in class. So if I say, oh, turn to page 49, it's your responsibility to find out where that is in your own copy. Okay? Uh, so I'll ask you, I will ask you next week if you want to buy a copy uh, through the department. Uh, after the novel, week 16, we're going to watch a movie, because I like movies. Uh, and then week 17, we will discuss the movie, um, just like we will discuss all of the other things that we read in class. And then week 18 is the final exam. The rules are the same as for the midterm exam, uh, and the final exam will cover only the novel, so not the movie. The movie is to give you a break before final exam week. Um, in this class, we will be doing small group discussions. So I will divide you into small groups later. Uh, and each week, before coming to class, you have to finish reading the assigned uh, text or the range that you're supposed to read. When you come to class, I will give each group a discussion question. You will spend time discussing it. Uh, and then uh, you will share your group's answer with the rest of the class and with me. And when we discuss your group's answer, I will try to broaden and deepen your answer so that from individual uh, localized points in the text, we can get an understanding of uh, the text more generally. And then after that, if we have time, I will talk about parts of the text that may be hard to understand or that were not covered in the discussion. Now, the discussion questions will all be open-ended questions. I'm not going to ask you something like, oh, what is this character's name? Or what did they do on page 29? I'm going to ask you things uh, such as, why do you think this character did this? Uh, why do you think the author said that? Do you agree? Why or why not? These questions don't have right answers or wrong answers. Every answer is acceptable. Now, there are better answers and worse answers. And the difference between a better answer and a worse answer is the more evidence from the text that you can explain, and the better that you can fit that evidence together in a way that makes sense, the better your answer is. So if you give an answer that only says one or two things about the character, it will not be as good as an answer that can make sense of the character, their relationships, their background, and their psychology at the moment in a way that makes sense. So if you give me a lot of evidence, but it doesn't fit together, that's also not a very good answer. It's a good answer that we can discuss. Uh, it's not a wrong answer, but there can be a better version of that answer. The point is, don't worry about answering a question wrong, because that's impossible in this course. Every answer is correct to a degree. Now, if 
Every week we're going to be discussing these open-ended questions. That means that for the midterm and final, uh, I have to ask you bigger open-ended questions. So each week's questions will focus on particular parts of the text, but for the midterms and finals, uh, the questions will have to do with the entire text. That's why it's open book, open internet, open dictionary, open everything but other people. Because you will need to uh, be able to look things up and to tell me uh, what the evidence is for your answer. Um, so, in this course, uh, the grading policy is as follows. Uh, attendance, 10%. Where's the... Okay, attendance, 10%. The group for performance of the play, also 10%. Uh, midterms, 40%. Finals, 40%. Uh, but don't worry, your midterm and final grade will not go from 0 to 40. As long as you turn in an exam, it will fall between like 28 to 39. In other words, in this course, as long as you show up to class, you take part in the discussions and the performance, and you submit a midterm and final exam, you will pass. Again, I don't want to give you too much pressure, uh, so as long as I can see that you're trying and willing to participate in the course, uh, I will not fail you. Now, uh, for the group performance, um, it's not just me giving you a grade. It's 10%, right? 5% comes from me. 5% will come from your fellow group members. And I'll talk to you a bit more about that uh, as the time comes. For now, let's look at the Moodle page. Uh, attendance and performance, that's for me. Well, no, attendance is for me. Performance is for you. So uh, at that, in that week, you will have to go home and fill out a form telling me how much uh, each group member has contributed to your performance. So this is not based on how well your group members did. This is based on how much your group members did. Uh, and this is important because the play actually only has three characters. So if we end up having more people and more than three people per group, uh, I would be depending on this sheet uh, to know what the non-acting group members did to help you prepare for the performance. Uh, and then the discussion questions are already prepared and uploaded to Moodle. Um, when you read the material each week, you can take a look first at the questions to help guide your reading. Uh, especially when the reading gets to be longer and longer, uh, you might get lost but taking a look at the questions first can give you a sense of uh, what is more important for this course. Uh, so to help you give, give you a sense of direction. Uh, when you read, uh, it's important to try not to keep running to the dictionary. If you encounter a word that you don't know, uh, try to guess the meaning first. Uh, because uh, as you may know, uh, the definition of English words is not decided by people who make dictionaries. People who make dictionaries look for evidence of how other normal people use words, and they take that to make a dictionary. In other words, uh, the meaning of English words is defined by how people use them. So the best way to learn English words is to use them. Uh, so if you can kind of guess what the word maybe means, uh, if you can still find, uh, figure out what's going on, then please don't go directly to a dictionary. Uh, after you finish the reading and you go through the second time, then you can look up all of those new words. Now, if you get lost, if you have no idea what's going on, then of course go to a dictionary. Uh, but try to use an English to English dictionary. Uh, because English to Chinese dictionaries, first of all, uh, things get lost in translation. No translation is perfect. But also, uh, in terms of English to Chinese dictionaries, 
most of the dictionaries that you can find are actually only based on two or three of the same source material. So even if you look up seven different English to Chinese dictionaries, you're basically only seeing two or three translations. And what if they get that translation wrong? For example, uh, what is the difference between the word terror and the word horror? If you look up these two words in the English to Chinese dictionary, both of them will tell you it means fear, zhu. But in fact, there's a difference, and there's a reason why we call scary movies uh, horror movies and not terror movies. And the reason is because horror isn't just about fear, it's also about disgust. Something that makes you feel disgusted, uh, like blood and, and guts and like people dying in strange ways. Uh, and so that's also why some uh, movies that are called horror movies aren't actually scary. They just simply have a lot of that kind of material. Uh, but that's not something that an English to Chinese dictionary may tell you. So it's important to, to try to look up English dictionaries to find the specific meaning. And finally, when you're reading, I will give you uh, everything but the novel using handouts. So you don't have to look for the material, I will give it to you. Uh, but when you read a lot, it's sometimes hard to remember what you read. So I recommend that you take notes on what you read as you read it. First of all, the act of taking notes will help you remember. But also, when you go back and reread it, uh, because you're preparing for the exam or something, uh, it's a lot faster to look at your own notes than to read through the entire thing again. So when you take notes, you can write like short summaries of what happens in this chapter or this paragraph or this section. Or if something important happens, you can make a note to remind yourself this part is important. And that way, when you go back to review, it will be a lot more efficient. And you're going to need that because, again, the exams have to do with the entire text. Uh, okay, so... Do you have questions so far? Yes. Uh, in our performance, we have to uh, demonstrate in the, uh, in the classroom or to just take a video? Um, I'm going to ask you to perform here okay. in the classroom. Right. Um, Maybe just uh, to show a short time. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to perform uh, two pages of the play. That's it. Uh, and you can read it so you don't have to memorize it. Uh, and it would be better if you could prepare like some stage props or costumes or like use the space instead of just standing and reading. You will explain or Yeah, I'll, I will, I'll divide you into groups, uh, but you guys figure out how you want to perform it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Other questions? Okay, um, so let's talk a bit about next week's essay, Telluride 19, An Introduction. Uh, this is an essay written by a film critic, someone who reviews films for a living. But it's not a film review. Telluride is a film festival. Uh, and film festivals are not simply uh, an event for people to come and watch movies. They're, they actually have a business purpose. Film festivals, okay, so there are two main ways to get a film onto market. The first way is someone has an idea, they have a friend who's famous, and they take their idea and their friend and they go to a film studio to try to sell the studio this idea. If the studio buys the idea, the studio will help give them money to make the movie and the movie goes directly to market. But not everyone has a famous friend and not everyone can convince a film studio. So the second way that films go to market is through film festivals. Uh, they uh, gather money on their own, they make the film first, and then they send it out to a film festival where the festival workers will decide whether they want to show this film. And 
uh, if they decide they do want to show this film, they will create a schedule of like a week or two weeks, uh, full of films all day, every day. And people who are interested in films, like uh, film reviewers, filmmakers, and studio executives, people who have the money and can put the film to market, come to see these films. And if a studio executive likes the film, they will buy it and help put it to market. So in fact, the film festival is often the first place where we can see uh, new creative artistic films that may be harder to sell to uh, big corporations. Uh, so film reviewers often will go to these festivals, again, to get the first look at the new exciting films and to tell readers what's going to ha uh, what kind of films are coming to the market soon. Uh, so this is uh, on, about the Telluride Film Festival in 2019, but it's an introduction. It's not about any specific film. Uh, the author, Walter Chaw, is uh, more of a personal style uh, film critic. He doesn't just tell you, is it a good film or a bad film? He tells you why the film is meaningful for him or why it's, it's trash for him, his personal reactions. So his style of, of film reviews is a bit different and it's more personal. So each year before he goes to another film festival, he writes an introduction to tell his readers uh, his perspective uh, on these films, how he's feeling and thinking at that point in his life, so that we readers can know uh, what his perspective is for that particular film festival. Uh, he does this for every festival every year, but I chose this introduction because it's... Uh, it's more uh, powerful and emotional, and uh, it goes deeper into his own thinking than usual. And I think it's an interesting way to think about uh, film, art, writing, and like you know, life in general. Like why why we do the things we do. The good news for you is it's extremely short. It's like two or three pages. Uh, but that also means that uh, the questions will be focused uh, more deeply than for a longer text. Um, and just because it's short doesn't mean that it's easy to understand all the time. So that's something that you can think about as you read it in preparation for next week. The handout I will give you later uh, includes the first uh, from weeks two to week four, uh, so the three essays. And then next week, after we're sure of how many students will be here, I'll give you the play. And then, uh, hopefully, before week 10, you will have the novel in your hand. Okay, uh, let's, where's the uh, sign-in sheet? 